Since HBO's rise to original programming prominence in the late 90s, dramatic narrative TV shows have become hugely important and influential to the media landscape. It could easily be said that this form of television has actually eclipsed film itself, and is that even much of a surprise? Why limit yourself to a mere two hours to tell a full story, when you can have ten hours to tell that story with much more depth and expand all your characters so much further? It is this extended storytelling capacity that has propelled narrative drama TV to the forefront of the industry, and why it is so popular. But with any immensely popular narrative drama, there will always be one lingering question. How will it end? I love TV right now, from sitting down on a Monday night to watch Game of Thrones to binging Stranger Things on release day, there is so much to choose from, and there's honestly something for everyone. We're spoiled for choice. But the popularity of some narrative dramas can sometimes work against them, as it makes executives keep certain shows going long past their expiration dates. Off the top of my head, I can already think of a number of shows that have been afflicted by this problem. So let's take a look. Lost is one of the most well-known narrative drama shows of all time. Starting in 2004 and ending in 2010, this show about the stranded survivors of a plane crash quickly became a pop culture phenomenon and enthralled viewers worldwide. But here's the thing, Lost was never supposed to go for six whole seasons. The creators of the show, J.J. Abrams and Damon Lindelof, came up with a series bible that outlined basic plot points for a four-season show. This is clear as the first four seasons are far superior to the last two seasons. This is mainly due to the story just becoming crazier and crazier, with much more focus on the supernatural and brain-aching time travel plots. There were flashbacks, flash forwards, and flash sideways? It goes from a relatively character-focused survival story, with some twists and mysteries, to a full-on sci-fi show, with vengeful smoke spirits and people dying, then coming back to life and dying again? Seriously, was there anything Lost didn't end up doing? The only thing left to do was space, and they probably already did that, but I just forgot. SPACE! I mean, I've already forgotten who everyone was. My point is that Lost was so popular and successful that the writers were forced to keep it going, and they had to keep upping the ante to retain viewership until everything culminated in a finale that either left people angry or sitting there like... what? But we'll get to that later. Another show that outstayed its welcome was Pretty Little Liars. If you haven't heard of this show, lucky you, but it is based around a simple premise. The leader of a small town high school clique goes missing, and a mysterious figure begins stalking and blackmailing the rest of the group. Sounds basic enough, right? Well, it went for seven seasons and 160 whole episodes. Yes, this simple, straightforward story was somehow stretched out for over twice the episode count of Game of F***ing Thrones. Similarly to Lost, the writers continually upped the ante each season, going from the small town mystery to an international conspiracy with secret relatives, underground torture prisons, a staggering death count, and actual actual, literal ghosts. It becomes genuinely ridiculous and outlandish, as the main antagonist essentially becomes an omniscient god. But don't forget that this show is supposed to just be about some dumb teenagers doing dumb teenage things and making dumb decisions. Somehow, Pretty Little Lies manages to jump the shark in a more insulting way than Lost ever did. It is a simple fact of business to never stop milking a good cash cow as long as it can keep making money. This is why shows like Lost and Pretty Little Liars end up lumbering on like zombies, desperately trying to clutch at their dwindling viewership. Speaking of shambling corpses, AMC's iconic flagship show, The Walking Dead, is rather ironic 
basically one of the biggest examples of a narrative TV show long outstaying its welcome and seemingly refusing to die. Its fifth season was the peak with an average of 14 million viewers, but the latest season, season 9, has an average of just 4.95 million viewers at the time of writing. Even the additional DVR and catch up viewership has plummeted. Despite this, AMC still plan to keep the franchise going for another 10 years, which is hilariously optimistic given its current state. But like I mentioned at the start, there is always one lingering question, a question that becomes harder to answer the longer a show runs for. How will it end? There are two types of endings to a narrative drama TV show, cliffhangers and closure. However, these are two extremes on a spectrum filled with failed attempts in between. Endings are arguably the most important part of a narrative, because they are almost always the very last thing an audience will ever see of your story. The ending needs to leave a certain impression on the viewer, otherwise it could very well sour their entire opinion of your work. Lost is an infamous example of this. Ever since it ended in 2010, Lost has become known for one thing above all else. It's ending. After building up six seasons of mythology, suspense and character development, Lost finished with what has come to be known as one of the worst TV show finales of all time. There wasn't really a cliffhanger, nor true closure. The final episode tries a bit too hard to be all ambiguous and twisty, with some weird contrived ending where everyone is in purgatory but only some of them? It makes no sense and has ruined the reputation of an otherwise great show. This is one of the worst scenarios for a beloved TV show, because if an ending isn't good enough, it can often invalidate the value of the entire journey up to that point. This is where cliffhangers and closure come into play. Whilst still often polarising, there are sometimes perfect endings for shows who decided to go out on top. Two of the most prominent shows to pull this off are Breaking Bad and The Sopranos, both of which managed to perfectly craft either a closure or cliffhanger ending. The Sopranos has the perfect cliffhanger ending for a show that seemed to have no way of ending itself. After a memorable and engaging six seasons, The Sopranos had its curtain call. But after all the scheming, death and drama, how could a story like The Sopranos actually end definitively? The answer is to not end it definitively at all. In the final scene, Tony Soprano is in a diner waiting for his family to meet him as Don't Stop Believing plays. But as the Soprano family arrive one by one, so do some suspicious and shady looking guys. Then as Meadow walks up to the diner, Tony looks to the door and hard cut to a silent black screen. It is one of the biggest, most unexpected cliffhangers of all time, and it has never been resolved. It is an ending that challenges the audience to fill in the gap themselves. Was Tony hit, or was it just paranoia? It's up to you. The debate as to what really happened has been going on ever since the episode aired, which is the sign of a great ending because it continues to keep people guessing to this day. Where Lost tried to be overly clever and smart with its half-baked ambiguous ending, The Sopranos just ends it right there, giving you an itch to get to the bottom of the mystery. A stark contrast to the ending of The Sopranos is the ending of Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad ran for 5 seasons and 62 episodes, establishing itself as an iconic and groundbreaking show along the way. But unlike The Sopranos, Breaking Bad had a very definitive and satisfying conclusion. The final episode of Breaking Bad is all about closure. We see Walter White returning home to Albuquerque to tie up loose ends. He gets his dirty money to his family, says goodbye to his wife and daughter before rescuing Jeff by wiping out the gang who killed Hank. We see where everyone is and everything is tied up in a neat bow as Walter dies on the floor of the meth lab. There is no ambiguity, no huge twist. It gives the audience closure and pays off everything that had been building since the very first episode. It is one of the greatest finales of any show ever because it reassures you that the journey was worth it, unlike Lost, which kind of just beat you up and took your lunch money and then ran away. 
when done right, cliffhanger endings can frustrate an audience into searching for answers for years and years after. Closure tells the audience that it is the definitive end, so they can look back at the journey and feel a sense of satisfaction and completion, knowing they can move on. But not every show can pull off a strong closure finale. Pretty Little Lies is a prime example of a failed attempt at a closure ending. The final episode of Pretty Little Lies attempts to explain everything and provide closure, but it fails. The show had gone on for so long that the writers backed themselves into a corner because they had to keep coming up with new stuff. So it was a bit disappointing when you finally get to the end and there's a random last minute evil twin who is British for some reason. Don't worry about it, I'll figure it out. Even though there are occasional hints along the way, the whole evil twin thing feels so sudden and unsatisfying. There's no sense of relief or gratification when she is finally stopped, because you have only really known about her for like 30 minutes. They just stop the twin and go off to live happily ever after. That's it. There's no real sense of closure like Breaking Bad. You see where the characters end up, but it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't come across as a definitive ending, because they had done so many false endings in the exact same vein. The episode ends and you kind of just sit there going, that was it? It doesn't even insult you like Lost, it just feels a bit hollow and flat because it doesn't feel like the conclusion to a journey spanning 160 episodes. Another thing we are seeing more and more often in this current age of TV are shows that end perfectly but continue anyway. There are two clear examples of this, both courtesy of Netflix. These shows are Orange is the New Black and Stranger Things. Both of these shows have been huge hits and found a massive global audience, but they both should have ended after the second season. Both of these Netflix cornerstones have grown in scope and scale due to their success forcing them to up the ante, but really these stories should have only ever lasted two seasons. Orange is the New Black has since become borderline unrecognisable and nothing like the small scale story it began with. Season 2 pretty much wrapped up the majority of the conflicts and plots, ending on a high note, but it has since had four more seasons with the fifth on the way. Similarly, the success of Stranger Things has led it to have a third season, with the possibility and likelihood of more down the line. This is completely unnecessary, because the story was already told in the first two seasons. The season 2 finale ties everything up and provides closure. The Upside Down is sealed, Will is saved and Barb gets her funeral. The protagonists go to the Winter Ball and we feel a sense of finality. The journey is done and we can see how every character has grown and changed since the first episode. Every arc is closed and we feel satisfied, ready to let them go because their story is over. But then there is a completely unnecessarily tacked on cliffhanger to set up a third season. It leaves you sitting there thinking, why? There's no reason for any further seasons because that journey is done. It's like if Walter White got loaded onto an ambulance and the camera zoomed in on his fingers twitching to set up a sixth Breaking Bad season. The last shot of Stranger Things rips away the satisfaction of its closure ending and invalidates the feeling of finality because it shows that no, the story isn't over yet. Why? Because money, so f*** you, you'll eat that shit up, we know you will. A big problem with the current landscape of TV is business clashing with creativity. As long as a show is hugely popular and profitable, it will be forced to keep going no matter what. Typically with TV shows, you don't plan for a staggering six seasons of story, because nine times out of ten, you'll get two seasons at the most. If those two seasons are successful, the executives will renew it for a third, fourth, even fifth season, forcing you to try
try to come up with completely new plot lines for characters who have finished their development and you have to make the scale bigger to justify the new season's existence because people won't watch otherwise. It corners the creators and makes them have to rewrite their perfect endings to accommodate the completely unexpected new stories they have to tell. There is something to be said about the boldness and creative freedom of anthology shows. Shows like Black Mirror and American Horror Story have been hugely successful, despite having completely isolated and self-contained narratives. American Horror Story only ever gives one season to a story, because that is often all a TV story needs. Keeping the story self-contained allows for constant change and experimentation, as the cast, crew and set settings change regularly, allowing for a complete regeneration of the show every time. It is why Doctor Who and Star Trek have lasted for so long. They are always changing, never giving a narrative the chance to go stale, because they end when they need to. Look, I can't deny that we are in a golden age of TV. There is an overwhelming amount of choice. From Game of Thrones, to The Expanse, to The Good Place, to American Gods, and so on. There is literally something for everyone, but the popularity of certain shows definitely works against them, because they end up being sold way past their expiration date, so that the production companies and distributors can rake in the money, because they couldn't care less about the quality of the stories, as long as they're making money. Is that nihilistic? Sure. But it's also realistic. Every now and then, we get a Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones, which decides to go out on top at their peak popularity, with the networks electing to make spin-offs rather than oversaturate and tarnish the parent show. But unfortunately, that's a rarity, because the majority of popular shows end up stumbling on until they peter out with a disappointing ending that retroactively hurts the show as a whole. It's a harsh price to pay with this golden age of TV. We either only get shows that end too soon or far too late, and that's a damn shame to say the least.